going to change people's lives. We're going to talk about hanging up the cleats. Happy Monday, everyone. It's Mary Chauvin and Sophie Harris back with another episode of Hung Up Cleats. So for this episode, we're not so much going to be talking about hanging up the cleats, but we're going to be talking about chasing the cleats. Yeah, so we wanted to do a fun episode about dating athletes or, you know, being involved with athletes, just because I feel like at some point or another, like a lot of girls have been involved with, talked to, went on a couple dates with, actually like we're in a relationship with athletes. Um, And we have a couple of our own stories. And then we've also heard like pretty crazy stories from other people. So we basically just got some listeners to write in some stories, and some of them are pretty crazy. So we're going to get to those. Uh, and they're all anonymous, so they were yeah. pretty pretty sticky situations. And then it's not even so much as just needing to bag an athlete or wanting to bag an athlete. You know, just you kind of date who you're around, like the sorority girls, date fraternity boys, people with the same major usually end up dating. You know, you know the lifestyle, you're around athletes usually end up dating athletes if you're an athlete which is how it works yeah you just like spend a lot of time together in the same like friend groups and like yeah. I just remember like I had like study hall with some baseball players and we had the same like financial advisor so I got like really close to a lot of guys on the baseball team and then just like I don't know you get like a lot of mutual friends you're like hey this is so and so and then we also had like athlete dorms and like mm-hmm. so you like lived right next door to like you know, guys on the football team or, you know, whatever. So, um, living in athletic doors is fun. Yeah, it is a lot of fun, but it also can, it's chaos. Yes. It's very chaotic. (laughs) It can lead to a lot. Mm -hmm. Uh, Everyone knows your business. Yeah. Everyone sees you lurking around the hallways. Like, Oh, you're on the lacrosse floor. Things spread like wildfire. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, you just gotta keep it under wraps, I guess. Um, but yeah, so like, even like from the beginning. So like when I started my recruiting process in high school, I was dating this guy who, um, he played football in high, at the high school I was at. And so we were both getting recruited at the same time. And so I just feel like when I was dating him, he was kind of like the only person that I like really like could talk to about it because he was going through the same thing. Like he was going on visits to different schools and I was like in talking to coaches I was talking to coaches going on visits and so I remember like after all of our visits we would like be like oh this they do this at the school and like they're giving me like this scholarship and like just um so it was like really cool and like every time like he he got like a ton of offers because he was really smart too so like every time he got an offer he would like text me be like oh I got another and like he was like you know those um there's like this photo of this guy in the bathtub and it's like filled with like these like letters. Have you seen that? I don't think so. This guy like had so many offer letters and pieces of mail that he filled up a bathtub with it. And he literally was just like, (laughs) that's funny. Um, That was him. Like he just had so many, but anyways, so he ended up playing sec football and you know, I was playing golf or like going to be playing golf at LSU But he was at a, like, he went to a school that was pretty far away. Um, And so, and, like, we, like, were, like, best friends. Like, we were very close. And, like, we were in the same friend group and all this stuff. But we, like, ultimately made the decision before he left to break up. And it was a very, like, amicable, amicable breakup. Like, we were just very, like all right, this is the end. Like, you know, we just didn't, we didn't try to do the long distance thing because like he was literally going to be like 10 hours away from me. And so, um, it was, it was definitely the best decision for us. And it was crazy. Like looking back, I was like, you know, we were so like, you know, he's like my first love, I would say, but we like, we were just like, you know what, this is what we need to do. Because we were both, like, so focused on, like, we wanted to perform well in our own teams and we wanted to have, like, our own experiences. And so, um, so, like, when he left, we just became friends. And I remember I, like, went to one of his football games, like, after my season was over and I got to see him. But, you know, then we started, like, dating other people. And now, like, you know, we're, like, still so close to this day. But the thing is, like, I'm so glad that we made that decision because, like, 
you know, football players and be like any of those like big sports, like basketball, baseball, football, they're the guys on campus. Yeah. Like hockey. Oh yeah. See, yeah. I'm not, I'm not from the hockey. Region I had a the- hockey school and she had a football school and like, I've never, I mean, tech had a football team, but I was there what, like a month. I didn't really. Yeah. So, that. right. We didn't have a hockey team, but I know like a lot of other schools like that's like the big sport on campus too definitely so um but like those are like you know they're like the big guys on campus and they're like getting all this attention and like especially at LSU like a school like LSU or any of the SEC schools like there are some people that are trying to get your attention and you know on social media and at the bars and all this stuff so I am very glad that I made the decision to just be like, okay, like, yeah, I'll even see though, you later. <laughs> even though we like athletes, we're like not like trying to go out and pursue getting an athlete, whereas some girls are. They're like, I need an athlete. Oh I'm yeah, gonna go get I've one. definitely seen. I was at my friend's house one time, um, and there was like this like group of girls over, and it was some of like my guy friends, the house we were at. And they were brothers. And one of the brothers was on the baseball team and one was on the football team. And they had, like, this group of girls over. And, you know, we were, like, playing a drinking game. And you had to, like, come up with a name for – I don't know if it was, like, for yourself or the team. And one of the girls was like, oh, like, let's let's call ourselves the cleat chasers. <laughs> and I'm just like, Ugh. do you think that's attractive? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, like, we joke about it. We're like, oh, yeah, yeah. like, whatever. But, like, you, you're for real. Yeah, I, I was like, like my best friends are always like, you, like, only talk to athletes. And it's not even, like, oh, I need an athlete because if I met a normal guy and, like, I vibed with him, like, obviously, like, oh, I would sure. not care. But, like, I don't know, just something about the lifestyle and the alignment of it and understanding it. I Especially at this point in our lives. And right. I, I was also thinking about this earlier. So, like, Alex Cooper, call her daddy. She played soccer. Was it Penn State? Been to Boston. Boston. Boston University. Um, yeah. yeah. So she she always talks about on her podcast, she's like, Yeah, I dated athletes for the longest time. Like she dated athletes all throughout college. And then her first like popular relationship was with the baseball player. And so like after college, like she was dating some athletes. And then like she started getting older, and now she is dating a, a movie director. That's sick. And so, but, like, that, like, kind of proves the point, like, when she was an athlete, she was dating these athletes, and, like, she was dating these, like, pretty high-status athletes, and, I mean, obviously, she's beautiful, like, she could probably pull whoever she wants. Right. obviously. Our queen. Yeah. (laughs) And so, but then it's, like, she is more in that producing industry now, like, she, like, started producing all of her podcasts, and she did all the YouTube videos, so now she's, like... She has more in common that's with someone industry. that is she has more in common with someone that's directing movies. Right. And sense. like she like majored in like film and television when she was in um, college too. So anyway, and she, she proved did, my point. She quit. She quit her senior year. She didn't play soccer. So by the way, I thought that was pretty cool. I like relate to that. I'm I like, forget about that. Yeah, she quit yeah. to pursue her podcast. Yeah. So so, so anyways, but yeah, there are girls that I like that. Right. I mean, I have kind of a similar story in the sense of my high school boyfriend. It was the same. We were both kind of going through the recruiting process together. I was more, he was already committed. I was going through it, but then he ended up going through it again. And we long distance dated. So he, he was a hockey player. So he was playing juniors and I was back home in our hometown for my senior year. And just kind of the same thing. Like, distance wasn't working and it's almost got to the point where we were just best friends like we were dating yeah but we didn't see each other like he was in Canada and I was in my senior year of high school we didn't see each other for like four months while we were dating and we talked every day but it just he was my best friend more of like my boyfriend yeah yeah that that was terrible I hated that but like it is what it is and we kind of did the same thing um broke up for college but Craziest part is we not broke up for college, broke up for distance, but the craziest part about that is he actually ended up coming to the school that I was going to and living across the hallway from me. That was crazy in the athletic dorms, like out of all of the rooms and we lived across from each other. That was that was crazy. You can probably see my dumb ass would be like, oh, it's meant to be like, (laughs) 
Yeah, I mean, I think probably like my eighteen-year-old self, I would have been like, yeah, me like naive little <laughs> freshman. I probably thought that, but like looking back at it, it was just kind of was like a crazy, crazy situation that happened. But I mean, yeah, I remember I went on my official visit, and it was kind of like the talk. Like everyone, everyone kind of knew what was going on. And my on my official visit, my coach was like, oh, so. I hear a, a hockey boy that you might know is coming on a visit in a few weeks. And I just was like, oh, my God, like, when is this going to end? And he would say comments to me, like, during preseason. He was like, got to stay away from those hockey boys and, like, wink at me. And I was like, oh, this is so awkward. This is my head coach. Like, why is he doing You this? know what, though? They would never say that to them. Like, their coaches would yeah. never be yeah. like, oh, that girl. Which, I mean, maybe – like he definitely got some backlash from his teammates but like but like your head coach being like like coach o going up to a guy on the football team like oh i heard you're talking to this golfer girl like no yeah. they're and not we doing weren't, that we weren't together at that point like we were friends but i don't know they love the drama sometimes we did not you can kind of imagine how that went we did not end on good terms which like that see was, that's why that's what i was saying like yeah. i'm so glad we broke up yeah and like if if my ex would have came to LSU, that would have been the worst possible thing for our relationship. Yeah. And, like, he is, like, a really important person in my life just because, like, we went through so much together in high right. school. And so – and, like, we're also part of the same friend group. So that's, like, another reason why yeah. we're still, like – we still, like, keep up with each other. But, yeah, like, think- it would have ended badly. Just yeah. because, like, they just kind of do whatever that, like, yeah. you know, like, it's I, just... like, I, we both had to sit there and, like, watch each other get over each other, and I think that was probably, like, one of the hardest parts, but yeah. I think we probably would have ended on... For me, on, it was, like, out of sight, yeah. out of mind. We would have ended on better terms if we didn't go to school together. I think going to school together kind of ruined that, but, I mean, that was my first love. Like, you live, you learn, but is what it is. Yeah, that's funny you say that about your coach, because when I went on my visit... I so I took my dad on my this is my visit to LSU obviously so I took my dad on the visit and you know we were just like you know going on the tour like around campus and then my coach like started driving me around and we were gonna go to see our facilities because our facilities were like a couple miles off campus and so she just like I don't know how it got brought up but all of a sudden she was just like yeah I don't let my date my girls date guys on the football team (laughs) And my dad, (laughs) my dad later told me, he's like, as soon as she said that, I was like, well, now she's going to date a guy on the football team. (laughs) And she did. (laughs) And she did. And well, but, and it's like, I get it. Like it's, they, they tend to have not the best reputation, which is true. Like as a whole, they do act like God's gift to the earth. Yeah. <laughs> and so... And they're kind of treated like it. They so are I treated mean, like no it. no wonder. And, and like, like, I, the coach O used to tell, like, the, his guys, like, he used to just be like, you deserve to get whatever you want. Like, he literally would say, not, obviously not exactly those words, but, like, he would tell them, like, this is, like, you are, you know, you're an athlete here. You deserve to get whatever you need. And so I think they just had this mindset, like, you know, this is who I am and this is the level I got to, which is great. Obviously, like, that's a big accomplishment, huge accomplishment. But the way that some of them would act would just it was just like an ick, an ick. Yeah. But then the thing is, some of these girls just like want they're like, oh, like, yeah, like I, you know, slept with this guy or, you know, it's like. Okay. I, yeah, that's, like, my biggest pet peeve is when girls want guys for the clout. Like, I'm very, like, a private person. I feel like I keep – if I'm, like, with someone or talking to someone, like, my close friends know, and that's about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to publicize everywhere, and most girls are like, oh, I got with this person. Yeah. Like, listen how cool this is. I'm well, just that's, like, that's so – No, I, there's this girl from high school that – she hooked up with Darius Geis. Do you know who that is? Mm-hmm. No. no. Okay. So <laughs> football player. He, that yes. explains it. So, <laughs> so he was a running back at LSU, and um, he ended up playing for the Commanders, and he had a really bad reputation. And um, 
he you know he he was one of the guys that got like had like allegations against him for not doing great things um but one of my no one I went to like college with or like on a team with um but like I ran into this girl from high school we were out with him and I saw her later at in my hometown bar shout out Crescent um, but she was just like, oh my God, like came up to me like, oh my God, I hooked up with blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I hooked up with Darius guys. I'm like, you're yelling. Yeah. Like keep that to <laughs> yourself. <laughs> oh my gosh. So yeah, it's just, I don't know. But yeah, anyways, pretty crazy. But it was just funny that she was like, I don't let my girls stay. And then, you know, we started my college boyfriend we started dating um the end of my freshman year and I like I was like do not let Karen like find out her name was Karen do not let Karen find out that I'm dating this man like I do not want her to know like all this stuff because the world will know and everyone will know your business <laughs> and so she ended up finding out like at SECs and she like looked at like one of my teammates she's like is Mary like she was like oh okay (laughs) and at that point what are you gonna do yeah you can't tell me who I can and can't date yeah let me figure it out for for myself but I do get it like a lot of them aren't great news so yeah my my best friend from high school she has this like running joke with me she's always like you don't even look for the athletes they just find you and like yeah in college when I was dating around I obviously knew when someone, like, played in my school and what sport they played, but I feel like everyone I've talked to since then, I've had no idea who they were, like, that they were an athlete that when I met me. them and liked them. And then I find out they're an athlete, I'm like... That makes sense why I was makes attracted. Sense. We're vibing. It's, well, no, it's, it's almost, honestly, like, at this point, like, how they're built, I think. Yeah. Like, if I see a guy that's, like, tall and, like, like athletic-looking, like, they might not be an athlete, yeah. but they're athletic-looking. And, and then I find out later, I'm like, oh... And you have to, you're like athletes are really mentally tough, and I feel like you can pick that up on when you're talking to someone, having a conversation with them. Well, yeah, like confidence, mentality. Yeah, definitely. And just like, yeah, I agree. Yeah. And it doesn't even have to be like a college sport. It's like you know, if you were, you know, playing a club sport or like whatever. Yeah. But, anyways, mm-hmm. so um, the next little topic we want to talk about since we you know have gone through it ourselves we're gonna do red and green flags and athletes so we both came up with our own list and we're gonna talk about our top red flags and our top green flags okay do you want to go first yeah should i read mine off just read no just i do one one, then you do one i do one okay we'll start back and forth red flags yes So, my first red flag is if their snap score is over a million. Because you know they be talking to lots of girls (laughs) all day, every day. I agree with that. Because, first off, like, how do you talk to – I want to see what mine is, actually. How do you talk to that many people? Yeah. And I've had – okay, keep in mind, I've had my Snapchat – Mine's about to reach a million, but (laughs) – I've had Snapchat since, like, sixth red grade. Red flag. I guess I'm a red flag. Yeah. Sophie's a walking red flag. See? Um, but, like, guys, I'm so I'm so bad at Snapchat. I, like, literally look at my notifications right now. You can't see it. But it's it says 73. Like, I'm the worst at it. I just, yeah. If you want to. Yeah. If you want to get in contact with me, you literally can't Snapchat me because. I was wondering I why you left me on and I delivered for four yeah. hours. Yeah, I won't be able I will, like, 73? open. 73? I'll open Snapchats, and it's, like, from four days ago. Like, I just. But you send them Snapchats yeah, before yeah. you open them. Yeah, I'll, like, See, send my, I'll send a little streaks, a little streaks. See, I think, kind of that's, like a what's up. I think that's dumb, though. What's I the agree. point of that? But I also feel like. See, I use it, I, like, genuinely use it as a form of communication. Like, if you send me my, if you send me just a picture of your face, <laughs> like, t- more than twice, I'm like, okay, I'm going to open you and I'll talk to you later when we have something to talk about. <laughs> well, like, I went to a school where, like, there I went to school with no one from high school. So I just kind of viewed it as, like, I don't care about streaks. I lose them and get them all the time because I'm so bad at it. Yeah. But I view it as more like a, hey, like, 
hey, to like my friends I don't talk to and see every day. I'm like, hey, what's up? Just checking in. Yeah, still care about you. Still there. That's just by the way. Yeah, that's you know fair. But well, okay. I've had mine since seventh grade, and I have three hundred fifty thousand. So I'm not a red flag. You were booed up though. I've been a single girl of college. Well, like oh, I was booed up in college. Yeah, <laughs> my face just now. <laughs> You're not wrong. Um. Yeah. So, anyways, I agree. Um. So mine is mommy issues. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's like an in general one too. Like just guys in general, not just athletes, but. That is a big red flag, especially because I'm convinced that the reason my ex basically begged me to move here was because he needed a mother. He needed someone to do the motherly things for him. So, yeah. (laughs) And like, that's not even like some cases it's a mother not being present, but others like you could have a helicopter mom that's all up in your business and your relationship. And it's just gives a lot of issues. Yeah, true. Okay. My next one is when they have one pillow and it's really flat on their bed. A flat pillow. (laughs) That's also a general one, too. Yeah. Yeah. And that kind of goes hand in hand with navy sheets. (laughs) One pillow and Be so for real. Have you ever been with a boy and their sheets are navy and it turned out well? Just let me know. Just let me know. Let me know. You can shoot me a DM on Instagram. Leave it in the comments. Yeah, let me know. Let me know. (laughs) Um, Okay. Talks about himself too much. Yeah. Some of these athletes, like I said, are they they're a gift to this earth. Mm-hmm. And they just like I don't know, they just talk about themselves like way too often and I just that's an egg to me. Yeah. I like care about someone other than yourself, please. Yeah. And they're like using it as a form to kind of show off, but yeah. It's just not, it's not you don't cute. have to show off like that. Like show me you're a good person. Show me you care about others. Tell me what you're thinking. Don't tell me what your batting average is. <laughs> <laughs> or how or, many games you scored in the no, last hockey or, game. Or, like, or those guys real. or those guys or that are like, oh yeah, like I, I should have gone D1, but like I just got hurt. Oh, those are the ones. And worst. then they tell you their whole career story from like like T ball. Yes. To, I did to a senior TikTok. year when they hurt their hip or something. Yes. I did a TikTok of my biggest icks and I was like He's, I was like, he's a four, or he's a 10, but he's, all I can ever talk about is how he could have went D1, and he's a frat boy. Like, like you didn't hey, go D1. If you could have gone D1, you would have gone D1. Like, be for real. Sorry. Not everyone can be a one percenter. <laughs> I'm, when she tells that story one day, it's all going to come together. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't well wait for y'all to hear it. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> okay, okay. Next red flag. Their only form of communication is Snapchat. That's such a big red flag for me. I don't know. I feel like texting is more intimate because you actually have to have a conversation opposed to just sending a picture. Like, you want to get to know Yeah, I feel like Snapchat's, like, a good way out. Like, when the conversation, like, kind of, like, fades off. Like, you just can send a picture. You could do both, but only Snapchat. Yeah. Yeah. I like doing both. Yeah, I like both, too. And then I also love FaceTime. Oh, yeah. Like... I am a big FaceTime girl. Like, I would rather that than either either of them. And, like, not, like, to where it's, like, oh, I need to FaceTime you all day, but, like, FaceTiming you for, like, 10 to 15 minutes throughout the day. Yeah. I like I like phone calls. But Snapchat, especially when, like, you're texting me something on Snapchat. And we're yeah. having a full-on texting conversation on Snapchat. Yeah, Text I'm me. like, yeah, I'm the same way. I'm like, why are we texting on Snap? It's so annoying. Yeah. But I love when a boy calls me. Oh. Yeah, hot. You have my heart. Like, hot. if you want to talk about something, like, call me. Like, it's so simple. It's the easiest thing And it's so much ever. easier to, like, yeah. get to the point. Yeah. I agree. Okay, my next one is can't function without a vape. Oh, yeah. I mean, no no shade, but please pick a healthier habit mm-hmm. if that is your your bad habit. And because... if you're an athlete, like, you're just screwing yourself over. Like, that's not good for you. Yeah. It's not. Well, they know. I mean, everyone knows. Yeah. But it's more just, like, I guess, like, from my personal experience, there's, like, 
you know, like people that just like literally they're like, oh, my vape's out, like, you know, freaking out, like I need to go, like whatever. And I'm just like, okay, like. It's not a personality trait, babe. Yeah. Like some of, yeah, some people are just like, oh, like I, you a know. Theme. Yeah. Yeah. Couldn't be us. Eh. <laughs> not my fave. So should we move on to green flags or do you have more red flags? I don't have any more red flags. Oh, okay. Yeah. I actually I think- do have two more. Okay. Yeah. Read them. Okay. So, my next one is he only sees you after hours. Yeah. Mm, You're getting those 2 a.m. texts. If you're – also, like, the, like, guys that you only see out at the bar and then you hang out after the bar or, like, you only hang out with them when they're, like, with their friends and you're with your friends at the bar. Like, Hmm. ask me to hang out. Yeah. If you like me. Take me on a date. Because that shows me, like, you don't like me that much if you just, like, want to see me at the bar and, like, yeah. we can be chill. We can be bros. Yeah. It just shows it shows where you are on their priority list at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the last one I have is he's for everybody. Yeah. No and one that, wants a piece of someone this, that That, in the had. sense that, like, it's like, oh, like, I, like, tell my friend, like, oh, I'm talking to this guy. Oh, like, my friend hooked up with him. Or, oh, like, I know a couple people that, and I'm like, I automatically don't like you anymore. Yeah. And, like, walking into a bar, knowing that there's probably multiple people in that bar that you have been with. I hate that. Mm -mm. I, like, I don't want, I don't want anyone to be able to say that about you. Yeah. You know? And, like, I understand there's girls in your past, like, everyone. Oh, for sure. Everyone has people in your past, but, like, walking into a room and you can pick out, like, five or six girls that you've been with and, like knowing that in the back of my mind I'm just no one wants someone that everyone's had and everyone can have yeah like no who wants someone that's easy eee, eee. sorry not sorry yeah um real talk here okay green flags okay um follows more boys than girls on Instagram like if you're going through a boys following and he's following so many girls and like that's no boys flag. that's a red flag because obviously he just like needs some validation from females or he just like wants to look at yeah or he just wants them to... attention <laughs> um yeah no for sure i do look for stuff like that yeah i mean i think everyone does my first green flag is when he hands me his credit card <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> It is like, go get what you want. (laughs) That's a joke. I mean, yeah, no, that's really nice. Having a sugar daddy, green flag. (laughs) Um, Okay, my next one is doesn't try to hook up on the first date. That's an obvious one. Because, like, if you, you, like, are interested in me at all, like, you're not going to try to do that the first date. Fair. But Um, if you are the type of girl that wants that. No judgment. Sometimes that works out, but like more cases than not, it doesn't. So just be careful. Yeah. Um, my next one is a snap score under five hundred thousand. I that shows that they're not really on their phone a lot. They're not really talking to a lot of people. I like even though yours is almost at a million. Yeah. (laughs) But I mean, like Sophie, walking red flag. (laughs) No, I'm a good girl, guys. I promise. (laughs) She is. is. I'm just kidding. Yeah. But boys always tell me I don't have emotions, and that's something I'm trying to work on. I do have emotions. I feel like I just you don't, haven't met the right guy yet. I just don't because show I didn't, them. I didn't either. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, I'm, like, crying over the dumbest stuff. <sighs> I'm just like, oh, you hurt my feelings. <laughs> I'm going to throw my – I'm going to pretend like I never liked you. I don't know. That's really, I used to do that, too. Yeah. It's a really bad way to deal with it, but, like, I don't know. Just – it's easier this way. That's true. It is easier. <laughs> um introduces you to his friends obviously yeah. like I know that I mean something to you if you are gonna oh, yeah. introduce me to your friends and I want to meet your friends I feel like knowing your friends is a good reflection of who you are and especially how your friends treat me too because I feel like that's a direct reflection on what you've said about me right like those guys that like try to like slide in after you like break up with your boyfriend that were friends with him yeah it's like, I just feel like that's so shitty I don't know well and then it's like okay well what did you talk like what did you say about me for them to think that that's okay yeah oh yeah that's I weird to that. me it's yeah. weird and like everyone's always like oh like get with his friend I don't know I just feel like that's so disrespectful I feel like if you like a person enough I wouldn't to date feel, them 
I wouldn't feel better. Like, if I, if the way, like, I was, like, trying to get even, quote, unquote, was, like, going for his best friend. Like, I mean, I get it. Like, it could be, like, a fun, like, oh, like, take that. Because, like, it would hurt their feelings for sure. Yeah. If that's your goal. I just feel like I would, I would end up feeling worse about it. And it would just, like, it would come back on me and I would just be like, dang, like, this was not worth it. Because now I feel worse. Because then you look like a bad person and then, like... Yeah, I want to walk friend. out, I want to walk out, like, looking, like... You lost a good one. Untouchable. Yeah. yeah. Like, untouchable dang. Untouchable friends, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, all your girlfriends like him and he takes care of them. Yes. Like, yeah, I don't know. When it's really hard for my best friends to like the boy I'm talking to, obviously, because... They're highly judgmental and don't think anyone's, like, good enough for me. That's just how it is when you're looking at your best friend's friends man. But when your friends like the guy that you're talking to, it's, like, a whole game changer because they're obviously on his side, too, and, like, hyping him up as well. And then if he takes care of your friends as well, like, I don't know. One of my friend's guys takes care of all of us if something goes wrong regardless if she's there or not and it just kind of goes to show mm-hmm. how much he cares about her because he's taking care of people she cares about if yes, needed so, absolutely very nice and then has a life and aspirations outside of their sport I think that's really important because one day your sport is gonna end like there's no way around it there's no stopping it like Sometimes your career is going to be longer than others. Sometimes it'll abruptly end. And if your only identity is, which that's, this is a hard one. But if you like don't have any sort of like, oh, this is what I aspire to do in the future. That could cause problems later. So, and we love a guy with good aspirations, you know, for sure. Even though we obviously want you to be successful in your sport, too. Calls your Ubers. Like, if a boy wants to see you, like, I don't know. There's been people in my past that have been like, where are you? I'll call you an Uber right now to me because I want to see you that bad. You know? And, like, yeah. same with, like, make sure you get home safe. Too. So, yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. Green flag. Yeah. Make sure you get home safe. Yeah. My last boyfriend, um, this was the, this was the the cherry on top that I was like okay this is not working we were on Broadway after um the playoff game I was out with my friends he was out with his friends they had lost so I was kind of just leaving him alone and so it was time to go it was like 2 a.m and I said hey uh can I get a ride home we lived together at the time so obviously not the craziest request in the world one would think he calls me and he goes, why do you think I would give you a ride home? Your boyfriend? <gasps> oh. This was oh. like literally we broke up the next day. Yeah, I would have been like, oh. Um, the crazy thing with that is they literally had a Lyft account. They didn't even have to pay to get Lyfts. In college they had like No, no, no. No. When he became pro. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So. Still, yeah, you literally lived with him. What? Yeah, and you get and you're making me pay for my ride home. We're literally ending up at the same place anyway. Yeah. And then I got home like five minutes before him. I was just like, mm. yeah. And yeah. like the next day, I like told him, like, that he called me and said that, and he was just like, oh, like maybe I just shouldn't drink whiskey. Like I don't remember that. And I'm like. <laughs> Drunk words are sober thoughts. Like, like that's rude. Yeah, even if you're also like, you what if something like, would have happened? Like, yeah. I don't know. It was wild to me. It was not. Yeah. So calling Ubers, green flag. Yeah, very much a green flag. Okay, so we're gonna get into these crazy stories, um, and I want to start off with a kind of crazy one that I have. Um, so basically, like my college boyfriend became a professional athlete and so but like we were like on and off like we had like a solid two years and then after the natty he won the national championship he's like I'm gonna break and I'm like oh okay let's see how that goes and then he like wanted to get back together and then it was just very back and forth for 
it was ridiculous. Anyways, so our, like, last time we broke up, we broke up in, we broke up our senior year. And because we didn't know what team he was going to, we didn't know where I was going to go for work. It was just like, let's just kind of like end it now and figure out our stuff. And then like, and in my head, since my high school boyfriend and I have such a great relationship and that's so rare. It's really rare. That like, I honestly like wanted that to happen again. And like, that's just such wishful thinking. But at the time I was like, if I can salvage a friendship out of like, cause it was like my high school boyfriend, we had like experienced all of high school together and that's why we were really close. And I kind of like wanted that with like, oh, my college boyfriend, like I look back like fondly on the memory and not that I don't, but it's like, I don't speak, we don't speak. Right. Yeah. And I just, you know, wish that it, I don't know. Anyways. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it was kind of like, I was trying to salvage that. And so we had like a very like healthy, like, okay, let's, you know, whatever. Um, and so then kind of by the time like the draft came around, we were still kind of hanging out, but it was kind of like, we're going to go our separate ways. Like it was just kind of like less painful the way we were doing it. Not just like a, all right, never talk again. It was more of just like a, oh, like I'm like so happy for you, whatever. And then kind of like when he moved away, I was just like, okay, we're probably just gonna gonna fizzle fizzle out. out. And so, um, he ended up moving to Nashville following the draft. You can fill in the blank on what team he went to. Um, and so. Go tits. <laughs> now. Now I can say that. Yeah. Um, he no longer plays for that team anymore. He ended up getting cut. Um, so Nashville's mine. So anyways, at the time. And we're so glad to have her. Yes. <laughs> Um, so at the time he moved and I still didn't know what I was doing. Like I literally had no intention in like going with him because we were, we're literally not together at the time. And so, but there was this, like, while we were broken up, there was this guy that I had met that had like asked me to hang out a couple times and he played pro- for the professional team where I lived. And so he I just I guess I just think I'm like oh if you're a pro athlete like you're not really serious about dating and like you're kind of just you know messing around and like I just am not that girl um it just like freaks me out I guess and so I never like hung out with him um and then he did offer me tickets to the last game Drew Brees ever played though so that was cool um so I did meet him then and he was very nice like good guy whatever Um, but like, honestly, at the time I just like, didn't want anything. Um, so when my ex moved to Nashville, coincidentally, me and my friends had planned a trip to Nashville after our senior year. The kicker is that the guy I met back where I'm from lives in Nashville during the off season. So many athletes in the national offseason. Yeah. There's a lot of, like, baseball players we know, football players we know that just, like, live in Nashville during the offseason. They could, like, I know, like, a like there's a guy from, like, Kansas City. There's um, a guy from Green Bay, I think. Like, there's a lot of guys that live here during the off. It's a great place to yeah. live. I don't blame well, We were at Ten Roof last weekend, and there's a bunch of football players here, too, now. Like, for the draft. They're, like, training here for the mm. draft. We were talking to them. They're really cool. Interesting stories. Like, but, they're still in college? Um, yeah. Well, they're cool. like, I don't know. I yeah. don't really understand football. Oh. <laughs> they were training for the draft, whatever that means. Yeah. So, they're, they're like, going to get drafted this year. So, okay. they're still in college. Okay. Okay. Um, so, anyway, um, I'm just, like, well, and, like, me and my ex are still, like, cool at this point. So, when I went up to Nashville, I did, like, spend some time with him. Um, before my friends got there or whatever. <clears throat> and then my friends got there and I got a text from the other guy like saying like, mm. oh, are you going to be in Nashville this weekend? And I was just like, there's no way that like something's going to happen. Like Nashville's a city. Like what are the odds? And so I'm just kind of, I just kind of blow it off. I'm like, oh, like I'll just, you know, whatever. Chaos reaps from the streets of Nashville. Yeah. So, <sighs> so one of the nights we go out on Broadway 
And my one of my teammates that came with us, she's underage and she had a fake ID. And they like we we like went to Honky Tonk Central and we got to the front and he was like he like looked at it and he was like, it's fake. It's a good fake, but it's fake and hands it back to us. We were like, oh, great. Good. So it's going to be hard to get any into any of like the big bars in Nashville and on Broadway. So then we like go and we like find um, this other bar that's smaller and like they let her in. So we're just hanging out there. And then the guy from that I met back home texts me and he's like, hey, come to Jason Aldean's. And he's there with some. Woo! <laughs> I love it, Jason. Sophie's favorite. Um, so he's there with like some other NFL guys and like other people. And so I was like, well, we have a girl that's underage. There's a line wrapped around the building. Like, I don't know if whatever. And he's like, you don't have to worry about either of those things. And I was like, slay. All right. <laughs> so then I take me and my friends across the street. That guy is waiting next to the bouncer. They don't check our IDs, or maybe they did and, like, glimpsed at them. We go up the employee stairs all the way to the roof into VIP at Jason Aldean's. Just like that. And my friend, we were, like, walking up the stairs. My friends were, like, looking back at me like, Mary, what's going on? I'm like, <laughs> I don't know but it's happening. So let's go. And it was, it was honestly like a great, it ended up being a great night. Obviously, like when something like that happens, you're like solid, like that's awesome. That's what chains burgers. And, (laughs) and I also knew that my ex was on Broadway too, but like he wasn't trying to help us out. So I was like, okay, well, yeah, like we're going to find another way. Yeah. Um, so anyway, and like this guy was like genuinely like trying to get to know me and he bought my friend's shots, hence green flag. Um, Taking care of the friends. Yeah. And so he like, you know, was very nice. And so my friends ended up like going to dance, like on the dance floor. And I'm talking to this guy and just like, you know, whatever, like, like having a conversation and whatever. So then I get a text from my ex-boyfriend. And he says, hey, where are you? I just saw all your friends. They have no idea where you are. And I was like, oh, no. Uh Uh-oh. Shit's about to hit the fan. (laughs) So. No! I just clicked the fan when I, I didn't even, I was thinking. I thought you did that. I thought you were like. No, I didn't even mean to do that on purpose. That was crazy. Um, no, yeah. So, anyway. And, like, it was very innocent. Like, I wasn't even, we were just having a conversation but I didn't want to stir the pot so I like went and like said hi to the ex and stuff and you know it ended up no one found out thank god he was on the other side of the bar like if they would have been like in the same vicinity I would have been in a bad situation but it ended up being fine and then when I got home I ended up going on a few dates with that guy we had some fun and then I ended up moving to Nashville and yeah um and then I reached back out to that guy and we're on good terms now but it's pretty crazy I was like what are the odds of that happening that's crazy. Yeah. Small world. So, yeah. Yeah. If y'all would have been in, like, a little triangle, that's the worst. I've yeah. had many scenarios recently I was, where I people was... walk up and they're like, the boys are interested in themselves. And yeah. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> I was very stressed out. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> so. And my ex was kind of crazy. So, yeah. I was not up for that action that night. Okay. So, now that I've told my story, I'm going to... We're going to read a few of the crazy stories that some people wrote in. Pretty funny. I was at a football game and a girl in the student section was telling all her friends a guy on the team had DM'd her a night before and she was all giddy and excited about it. I got nosy, of course, and we were both drunk, so I asked her who it was because I said I knew a lot of them and wanted to tell her if he was a good guy or not. Sure enough, it was the guy I was dating. (laughs) Damn. I would literally lose it oh I would lose my mind yeah I would lose it too I would oh. I really wonder like what she did after that because I would have brought her with me to like go up to my boyfriend and been like hey look, look this at my, new, my friend. new friend we had a lot to talk about yeah we have a lot in common turns out yeah what it's the crazy. heck like what are you gonna do invite two girls to your game and they're sitting in the family section of your game so crazy 
Like, what if one of them was, like, wearing his number? Yeah. Oof. Which? I would lose it. You don't do that till you're serious. So. Mary had a bonfire yesterday. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I literally, it was, it was so hard because, so I have, like, four different, I have, like, two things from college that I bought and then two from the professional team that I bought. And they were expensive, dude. Like, I spent probably at least $400 on all of this stuff. And I'm, like, not the type of person that's just, like, I'll burn it. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, like, that will – I don't think that would make me feel better. I mean, maybe a little bit. But, you know, whatever. It was just sitting in my closet. And at this point, it's taking up room. So I was like, what should I do with these? Does. Should I just, like, have a bonfire? Or, like yeah. – but then I was like, you know what? Watching $400 burn would, like, really, like, hurt my feelings. So – I texted his cousin, and his cousin, like, wants to keep him as keepsakes. Oh, that's, that's... So that I'm just gonna good. send him to that him. Like, they're, like, they're just, like, keepsakes for them. Yeah. So it's, like... And one of them is, like, a jean jacket, and it's, like, painted. Oh, it's, cute. like, hand-painted. So it's, that's like, good I don't know if there's something like that. To his family. Yeah. If I'm ever in that situation, I'll do that. Yeah. Good call. Um, okay. Let's see another good one. So I was talking to this guy, and one night we both went out to different bars. At the end of the night, he texted me and told me to come over. When he got back, I walked over because I lived right next door. Him and his friends were in the living room, but my phone was about to die, so I went to plug my phone in in his room. When I went in there, I saw there was a phone already plugged in with a girly phone case. Then I look over and saw jewelry and heels in the corner. I was kind of drunk, so I just walked back into the living room, and I was like, hey, who's here? He was like, what do you mean? No one. So I was like, okay, then thought about it for a minute and asked again. He was like, what are you talking about? I was like, you need to go look in your room. So him and his friend get up and go into his room and immediately come out and start to whisper. He was like, all right, we got to go. Turns out it was a girl he had talked to previously that he saw at the bar and followed him to his house. Turns out she tried to get in his Uber and he didn't let him. So she ended up going home with his roommate that took her friend home that same night craziest thing that happened to me in college <gasps> that's nuts so this Why girl you... was like following him around the bar tried to get in his uber and he was like no you can't get in and then he literally she literally was like hey to his roommate since you're taking my friend home i'll take i'll like get a ride home with you that's crazy and literally just got in his bed i feel like that's just embarrassing for her like i'm not going to a guy's unless he's like bring me with him you know what I'm saying or is like hey meet me come over yeah yeah like if he's literally like forcing you out of the uber and you're like obviously oh he doesn't like want, obviously he doesn't want you there yeah so cool. look at us winning with our Gatorade <laughs> sponsored hopefully one day yep one day it's crazy okay Went over to a D1 baseball player's dorm a couple times, learned on the first visit that he had a foot fetish. It started with him just massaging my feet, then he took my socks off while I pretended to nap so I didn't have to acknowledge it. Went over three times total and left every single time missing a singular sock. This is the same guy that openly told me he had a basketball team-like roster that was three strings deep along with where I fell on said roster. Baseball players are something else, lol. That's so bizarre. That's so bizarre. Missing the socks. Like, what are you doing with her socks? Are you, like, (coughs) feet are so dirty. Are you sniffing them? Because that's gross. Yeah, I don't get the whole feet fetish thing. Me either. Feet are gross. Yeah. And Uh, also, this girl, like, after after missing a sock the second time, you go back. (laughs) Yeah, I'm like, you want to, you're going to go a third time? Like, the first time wasn't enough? Well, I mean, the first time is a coincidence. Yeah. (coughs) Yeah. (coughs) Gave him the benefit of the doubt. That's crazy. LOLs. I have too many (coughs) because hashtag cleat chaser. But this is the one that literally still pisses me off when I think about it. So I was dating a college baseball player. One day I was with some friends and a freshman on the team showed up shopping with me and and my friends. It was all good and fine till we started talking about their game the night before and how terribly they lost. Well, he was an outfielder outfielder, and proceeded to talk about how he could throw 90 off the mound, and he was better than the kid who was about to get drafted. I laughed, argued a little, saying, well, if you're so good, why didn't coach put you in last night? They, I'm sure they needed you. Blah, blah, blah. 
I told my boyfriend about the entire conversation and it got back to the kid about to get drafted. And it ended with me being called a quote unquote fucking liar in the entire baseball team group chat. My boyfriend, now ex, not defending me to keep the peace with his team. I reached out to the boy to see if we could handle the drama like adults in person, and he refused. To this day, I can tell you he never pitched in a collegiate game. I still have the screenshots of the entire encounter, and I am baffled any time I think about it. Dang. That's crazy. What? Like, if my boyfriend was not defending me in the locker room. That's crazy. So she, so basically, I think the boyfriend or someone ended up telling the guy about to get drafted, oh, this kid is trying to say that he's better than you. And the kid saying that called the girl a liar. And obviously they took his side. And so mm-hmm. the girl ended up being like hated because be my biggest fear. Like, they claimed that she hated was lying. on in a boys group chat. Yeah, oh. imagine you being the topic of discussion in a boys group chat and imagine your boyfriend been not there. been there. Your boyfriend not sticking up for you. Yeah, I would mm, No. I'd not be okay. Good thing that. he's your ex, girl. Yeah. That's insane. I want to know why y'all broke up though. So give me the tea. Shoot us a DM. I'm like intrigued. If it's because of that, yeah. good. If you, kept da- if you kept dating him after that, like, girl, respect yeah. yourself. No, your man is supposed to have your back. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it is a sticky situation with a team, but still. Like, he knows you're not a liar. For real. All right, guys. Well, that was fun. Yeah. We had a good little chat about being a clee chaser. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> All right, well, um, we have an exciting interview for next week, so stay tuned. Um, He is probably someone that you've heard of, and he has a lot of great things to say about mental health and being an athlete and college uh, athletics versus professional athletics, so please stay tuned. Um, But yeah, rate us five stars, all of the cringy shit that I say every single week. Uh, good reviews, all of that. If you have a bad review, just write it in your journal and then burn it. Yeah. We don't want to hear it. We didn't ask. If you comment something, I'm going to I'm gonna come back and be like, where? Where did I ask? Yeah. All right, guys. See you next week. Bye, guys.